Hi guys, so today I went and picked up a new sewing machine. Well, new to me. So this is a Singer commercial grade uh, model CG550. And I saw it on Facebook Marketplace for free. And the complaint was that it just jams often. So I went and picked it up this morning. The person I got it from thought it may be something to do with this presser foot. Um, it's a little loose and wobbly and it kind of leans in a little bit. Uh, she thought maybe something was bent. Um, so I've just been messing around with it for a few minutes. Um, and I noticed that I ended up with a large bundle of thread on the underside of a piece of scrap fabric when I was trying to sew. Usually that indicates a tension issue. So on this model, you adjust thread tension with this little knob here. So it was originally set to between two and three. And so I bumped it up to five. I was still getting some really loose stitches. Um, so I bumped it all the way up to, to the max setting of nine, still getting really loose stitches. So, so start off with this, uh, we gotta make sure that we have it threaded properly. So you start with the thread over the top, bring it up from underneath this bar and it'll kind of catch in a little groove. And then you take your loose end, come back towards your thread spool and then loop it forward. And then there's a little arm that comes here. You come underneath that, kind of pull it back, and then get it through this slot. Uh, you'll come down and around the tensioner here, and there's a little loop, a little spring loop, and that provides your tension. You come up on that, and then you've got this little arm that comes through here, and you kind of wrap it over that, and the thread needs to slide back in on top of that arm and go in a groove and then end up in the... Um, through this little hole here. And then you'll come down, you've got this little curly cue, and you come in from behind it and loop around so that it's just going straight through the middle. And then I usually like to take the end of my thread, go ahead and thread it through the hole in the needle. And then once it's through the needle, there's a little tiny loop up under your needle clamp here. You just kind of put it in there and that way it'll get in behind that loop. And now you have your machine threaded properly. So your little spring, this little uh, hook on the spring here provides your tension. But what I noticed is when I turn this tension knob, it's not actually doing anything to that spring in there. So. I think probably what happened is that tension spring maybe broke. Um, there is a little knob. Uh, on the back side of this knob, there's a little tab that I think a part of that spring is supposed to catch on. So as you twist it, it just provides more tension on that spring. And I think it's probably broken. So I need to figure out how to get this apart and figure out what's going on in there. So this little cover just pulls off. Uh, you can see there's a little spring clip and it just fits over this post. You do need to have the top cover off, but it's just a matter of pulling the, your three slide adjuster knobs off and then there's two Phillips screws from the top. And then when you take that off, you kind of got to tip the back up and slide it out off of these levers and then it just comes right off. Okay, so this is all kind of just exploratory for me. Um, but right in here, there was a little flathead screw. It's got a square nut on the back side of that, on the inside of your dark gray metal frame here. Um, this knob has some limit things on it. Um, it can only go around so far, but I believe this knob is just threaded so you can pull out and get past the limit and then it will just unthread. Um, on the back of this, you gotta pay attention to how this comes apart. So you can see there's a spring in there and it's a really strange thread, uh, but you can see that shaft is split in the middle. And then we've got this little, oh boy. Let's see if I can get this out as a bundle. We've got a Millennium Falcon shaped dimpled washer. And then inside of that, 
We've got a little uh, dish shaped washer with the cutout at the top. And then another dish shaped washer, just backwards. And then we've got this washer that has a couple slots in it. Looks like there's a little, little hook right there. And then there's a tension spring in here. Oh yeah. Where did that go? So this little tiny piece was stuck in there and I think it's probably part of that tension spring and it just broke off. But I don't know for sure yet. Hmm. Well, it's definitely a thicker gauge wire than the spring uses. So maybe it was just some type of retainer. And Shoot. That's no good. That little L-shaped piece of wire went doing somewhere in my carpet. Got it. Little magnet on a screwdriver. Alright, how is that supposed to go in there? Dang it, again. Okay, so I lost my little L bracket, but I think I'll be okay. I think the only purpose of that is to keep this round tension spring from flying out. So there is, on, on the back of this tension spring, there's this little leg that sticks straight out the back. And in the back of this round recess, there's a hole back there that that fits in so you gotta kind of line that up get it pushed into the hole and then you twist the tension spring around and you kind of hook it over this little plastic nub and then you would take your little l-shaped piece slip it in there just to keep that from popping off but i think i can maybe reassemble it without that the next piece to go on is this little washer with the slot in it and then there's a little hook on the back that hooks into these little slots in this white plastic piece. So there's there's three there. I don't know what the difference is. Um, this slot actually goes over that little nub that the spring is catching on. And so you could put it in any one of those three uh, notches and that slot is gonna line up with that little nub. But I'm just gonna probably put it right in the middle and. I think that'll probably be good. Uh, the next is our little dished washer. Um, we want the concave side facing the machine. And then doing these next ones, uh, it's easier just to kind of slip it over the end of your tension knob shaft. So make sure our spring stays on there. We need, need 18 hands for this. So I'm gonna take my little Millennium Falcon Slide it on there, just facing up. Take the dish um, so that the dish fits over the little nubs of the Millennium Falcon washer. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw that one over there as well. Get this lined up. Make sure my little spring hook stays. Slide that in. Get 
Yeah, I forgot. You gotta you gotta take this shaft out because this Millennium Falcon needs to slip behind um, this top post. There's little ears on that top post. But now we can slide that back in. And there's this, a shaft that this kind of threads onto or into or something. I just kind of hold from the back and start to thread. I've hit my limiter. I'll pull it out, get it past the limiter. And there's my limit, which should be about at the nine position. I think maybe just the, um, there was something goofy with this spring, like it wasn't in place or something. Um, and when you, when you twist this knob, basically all it's doing is allowing those two dished washers to kind of have, have some clearance between them. As you twist it in, it presses those two dished washers together and that will, is supposed to squeeze on the thread, providing the tension. So I'm gonna put this back on. Okay, so this little tab slides into this groove. So you gotta make sure everything gets lined up. Just got a piece of scrap denim. Um, I'll set my thread length on two millimeters. there you can already tell it's right here between my thumbs it's hard to see um, but with this set on zero um, it's already a way better stitch than it was doing earlier so here you can see kind of what it was doing earlier um, the bobbin side of the thread just had real big loops uh, there was like zero tension um, so it wasn't even trying to pull the stitch back into the middle of the cloth so uh, whatever goofy was going on in there, I think I've got resolved. Um, I don't know what's up with this foot. It's like super wobbly. But um, they've got the two, three, four, five kind of highlighted on your tension gauge. That's probably your typical running tension. So um, I'm going to go up to a five millimeter stitch and I'll just see what happens. Um, so yeah, that's much better. You can see pre-tension fix, and then this is on a number two tension. So yeah, there's something goofy in there. Um, I did lose the little spring retainer, but once you get it all assembled, that's not really needed. It's just to make sure things don't fly apart as you're taking them apart. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, super excited to put this thing through the paces. Price was definitely right. Can't beat free. And it seems to be a simple fix. Um, if, as I start using this, I continue to have issues with it, I'll definitely put an update down in the description. Um, I don't do sewing projects very often, uh, so it could be a while before I know anything. Um, but if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like what I do. Hit that subscribe button, and until next time, we'll see you later.